Well, my name's Jerry Sitt, and I'm, uh, I was born to be an artist, I think. I, I, I just when I was young, I saw pictures in my head of everything, and I had to paint them and draw them like a lot of kids do, but I was getting really serious about it. I would, I loved doing it in the first place. But before I get into all that, I, uh, I grew up uh, in Seattle on Queen Anne Hill. And uh, I had, uh, there were seven of us in our family. I had three young brothers, uh, th three brothers and three sisters. And uh, I was right in the middle of that. Um, and we, we had a, a great life. I lived a block away from the grade school, and then when high school came, I went to Queen Anne High School, and uh, I had to walk uh, about a mile and a half every day, and I was, of course, always late in getting there, and that's all right. I enjoyed the walk all the way to the school because I'd see all these buildings and all kinds of stuff that, that I would want to paint and draw, and it was just a, something, um, I must say that my whole life, I remember everything I have ever seen since I was six years old. And I don't need to look at anything to draw or paint it because I remember everything in all the situations and the drama that had and, and the snow and the weather and the hot days and uh, just a, a particularly remember my dog, uh, Prince, he was a collie, a beautiful collie dog, and he would go everywhere with me, and he just had a great time walking with me, and, um, and um, I went to art school, uh, I, uh, I don't know how many years I went uh, off and on when I could, and I, also worked uh, a lot, and um, I did uh, I did everything. I used to be a stagehand for the Opera House for five years. Um, I drove a taxi cab four years, two days or two years during the day and two years at night. Believe me, there was a difference, and uh, with the people uh, and. Uh, I, uh, I just, I had a lot of jobs. I said, uh, I worked for the city of Seattle for nine years. Uh, I was, uh, I went through all the building trades. I became a, a journeyman plumber after three and a half years. I went in the carpenter shop and I stayed in there about a year and a half. Learned how to be a carpenter and build stuff. Then, my favorite, I was, I went into the paint shop for about four years, and that's what I loved. And I go out and paint all the buildings that the city had. Uh, and we're stationed, I was stationed up on, in Woodland Park. They had a section for all these uh, building trades, you know. And uh, anyway, they, they had, oh, I was going to paint the, the elephant house there. So I got my paints, my five gallon buckets and all my gear ready to paint, I go up there. I drive myself up in the truck and I get out my stuff. And um, in the field out here of the elephant, where the elephant was, this great big tall building you can imagine that had to be for an elephant. And then there was also a hippopotamus. And the hippopotamus was out in the field, and he was looking at me and facing me. And he's a big animal. So I felt comfortable with where he was, and I, so I took my paint buckets and went over the fence with him and set him down and picked him up. I was going to carry him over to the building that I was going to paint. Well, this hippopotamus saw me, and he came barrel of full bore at me and in between me and 
Eli, there was this pond, and he was running, and he leaped in the pond, and he, he was so fat and big, he bounced out of the water on the land and was coming at me. And I grabbed those paint buckets just in time, got them over, and leaped over the fence just as he got there. Uh, uh, well, I thought, I'd, what an aggressive animal. I, so he wandered back over there, and I eyeballed him. And I thought, oh, I've got to paint this building. So I put the paint buckets over there. Here he comes again, barrel on me. Anyway, this went on a couple of times. I asked one of the zookeepers, I said, you know, I'm having a problem with this. Can you get him out of the way or why does he keep attacking me? And we figured out, he and I, uh, that in, when they feed this hippopotamus, they feed him with, they get um, paint cans from the paint shop and put the lettuce and all the food in, in these paint cans. Well, when I put my paint over there, he thought that he was going to get dinner. Anyway, that's how, that was just an incident about working at the zoo up there. Uh, I put in nine years up there, and I, I was married. I have um, one, two, three kids, yeah. And, uh, I kept going to art school. Um, I went to art school at night because I worked during the day and I had a family. Uh, but uh, I loved going to, to my classes at the uh, uh, college and uh, up on Capitol Hill. I had a, a, a great art teacher whose name was Fred Marshall. He was a illustrator for the Seattle Times newspaper for 25 years. And uh, he, he, he helped me a lot because he could see that I was uh, ahead of the other people in the class and I, I took a shine to watercolor right away. And so, uh, yeah, those were the good old days and so, I decided that that's what I want to do with my life, and I want, and I want. I knew I had to make a living at it, so I started teaching. And by teaching watercolor and painting at classes, I I get a studio, and, and uh, in the evening I would teach my classes, and I would go to work at with the city at the uh, city job I had. Um, I was also a, a, a stagehand for the Opera House for five years and I enjoyed that because not only did I meet a lot of celebrities from all over the world, and, um, I saw how the stage was created for a particular scene and fiddler on the roof with the cabin and the guy on the roof and all kinds of ways and uh, always came down to my art, uh, that what I want to do and I also, uh, my, my older son, I taught him uh, how to paint and I would take him, I'd take uh, God classes after I got off work to the city, I'd, I had a, I'd go to a different city and a class and go in that evening and teach a class for him. And, uh, I remember I used to teach a classes over in, where in, uh, in, well, in the country, uh, and these country folks would join in, uh, and I would trade them for uh, all kinds of vegetables and stuff like that that they made in their, for tuition for the classes, and, and I had a good time, and I, my son came along with all my classes, and he became a really a good painter. For the, I taught for the University of Washington for five years, and they would send me on assignments uh, to bring culture to the outside world, they called it. And they would send me all kinds of different places around Washington State, and, I'd, and up in Alaska, and down in California, I went everywhere. 
and for a week at a time at different places. I love teaching. Uh, uh, I, I've done my homework. I know a lot about it. I have eight and a half years of design and architecture and, and uh, painting, of course. And uh, so I'm well versed and I know what I'm talking about. And I always did a demonstration painting to start with in the classes because it inspired them to want to paint too. And they see all that paint going on. And I, of course, I, I get inspired. I was in my own world. I was very fortunate. My people liked my paintings and I made a very good living at That's when I went down and resigned from the city of Seattle after nine years because I was going to do this full time. And I did and I got a studio with Bill. Now I had a studio and I, uh, Bill Reese, uh, I knew him and he came into the studio with me up and we were there for 11 years in Redmond. And, uh, I would teach my classes at my studio and, and uh, we would paint there. Bill Reese and I would paint every day up there and talk about old times. And, and uh, sometimes we'd see some of the guys from the Puget Sound group come over and see us and we'd go to lunch. And, uh, yeah, those, the Puget Sound group of Northwest Painters, were, they were the last word, they were the, their reputation of quality was above everything else. Was John Ringan, yeah, I went to some classes at some school, uh, that was a night class, night classes in some school, uh, an accredited school, and John was the instructor, and, and I, I, uh, I learned so much from John. He was a, a great painter. Besides a great painter, he he was he had a great sense of humor, and he he uh, he was just fun to be around with, you know. And he taught the classes well. And I learned from him, and I studied with a lot of different people. I studied with a, a Russian painter named Sergei Bongard from Soviet Union, and. Uh, uh, I consider him a genius painter. He was the best. Sergei Bongard, yeah. He, uh, he told the class and myself the story of him, how he got out of Russia. He, he and a friend of his, he was from the, oh, what's the name of that place in Russia? I forget. Anyway, it was 2,000 miles away from the German border. He and his friend walked 2,000 miles day and night to the border to get across into the, he wanted to come to the United States. And uh, Sergei was, uh, oh, he was a genius painter, I felt, and I thought, and as everybody else did. And, uh, but he said, you know, he would, and his journey of 2,000 miles, it took you a long time to go that distance. And so he would uh, get, uh, find these old farmer places, he'd stay in the barn, and he'd go out and dig some potatoes to eat oh, for food, and, and on he'd go to the next one and uh, always conceal himself at night, you know, so he didn't get caught. He got to the Russian German border. And he, uh, he was so determined to leave Russia and go to the United States that he was willing to take any risk, so he's at the border. And the border guard at the gate was standing there, and up the road came a rumbling Soviet uh, a truck with some soldiers on it. And he looked at the truck, he knew it was going to get him, it, it's going to get him. And he just, in this one moment, he just took and walked right through the gate and he was waiting and he, his pace hastened as he went through 
and down this path, and he said he was waiting for the pistol to cock, it, so it was going to shoot him in the back as he walked, and as he walked away, he kept going faster and faster. He didn't hear any uh, any uh, of clicking of the magazine and stuff that it was going to shoot him with, because the the German border guard was standing right there and was. He said, I would rather die than go back to Russia. And so, after he, he kept walking faster and finally he got away and went into Germany and, and then got on a, some kind of a freighter, came to the United States, and of all places, he went from New York, he got, he, he walked, he got all the way down to in Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, and uh, he started teaching classes and art down there. And, uh, anyway, he was one of my all-time great painter uh, teachers, Sergei Mungard. You know, I take it very seriously, uh, art and painting, and I, I just stayed with it and learned from everybody. Uh, all the guys, in, in, and I joined the Puget Sound group of Northwest painters, who all, all, all these great guys that I uh, looked up to uh, had uh, were painters, and um, and so I um, I look forward to all those meetings and stuff, and I soon became president of the place, and and. Uh, I was amongst all the other big guns, and yeah. but, I, but one of the uh, the things that uh, probably didn't set too well with me was dealing with galleries and stuff. Uh, I would, I would, my eyes wide open, thinking that they're all reputable and they're honorable people, and, and uh, I found out that some of them weren't. Most of them were, but there was people that, you know, they would sell your paintings and and their rent would be due the next day, and so they would use the money they sold your paintings for to pay their rent, and then they would tell you, oh, well, we'll, we'll catch up with you, and, and uh, well, a few of them, I paid the rent for their studios to stay open and didn't get paid. But, and they took a pretty good commission, uh, of, of a third, 30% 30, 30 or 33 and a third percent of the sales. Of, and, uh, and I would always, uh, I would. The reason I paint is it's an emotional thing. You know? uh, it's just, something that you can you know how to do and you, it's very easy and it, it, well, at least with me it was and is uh, but uh, I get a lot of students in my classes that came in and they thought art was just about getting every little detail and, and boning it out with the uh, and and there wasn't any emotional content in their work. Uh, and I would tell them, put your heart into it, paint with feeling. If you're painting a, a trail or a, a road or something, and it's horizontal, paint it horizontal, paint what it's doing, paint everything what, the, what it's doing. If it's a building, paint vertically, you know. If it's a figure, paint, give them a gesture. But, feel what you're doing and you get involved with it and uh, mm. not everybody <laughs> had that mm. intuitive nature about them. They thought it was just about doing it, doing it just like a photograph, you know, and, but that's okay, that's their way of doing it, um, but a painter, uh, you, you you're emotionally involved with the painting. You feel everything that you're doing, and you 
and you get in your own world. I don't know. It's... But I started out with watercolor with Fred Marshall at the at the college up there. Uh, at, what was hard about it? Well, you only got one shot at it. If you try, if you did a watercolor and you tried to, yeah, there's something in there that was wrong and you tried to fix it, it would look like you fixed it. You had no choice. You had to be very, um, oh, you had to be, paint the thing like you wanted it. You got to, you got to really get involved with the painting and that's the way I paint. I just get so involved I can feel everything I'm doing, whether it's a a dirt road or a shingle on a, on a roof or a, a figure, a gesture of figure or uh, whatever something is doing, that's, that's exactly the way I feel about it. Whatever I'm painting, I paint what it's doing. And it paints itself to me. It, it just it just paints itself uh, if you paint what things you're doing. I'm a, I'm a signature member of the American Water Society, yeah? And uh, I'm also a signature member of the National Water Colour Society and all the other big societies and uh, the thing in getting the American Water Colour Society, which is stationed in New York, you have to enter their annual show with one painting only once a year and you have to get accepted into that uh, American watercolor show three years in a ten year span. Well, I entered it three years and got in every year and became a member of, and I, I, it was quite an honor. That was one of my highs. That, I had, and, and as a result, you get to sign your name, AWS after your name. But um, uh, a Navy combat artist, I have paintings in the Pentagon. Oh, mm -hmm. for heaven's sake! Not too many people can say that. Yeah. No.